Selecting the right column is of utmost importance for achieving desired efficiency, retention time and separation. In this video, we will discuss on how to select the right combination of pore size and the ligand or stationary phase. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte. I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and I have helped many pharma professionals to push their career by achieving absolute clarity on various topics. I have also helped them to identify new untapped opportunities in 90 days. I hope you will find this video and discussion useful. So first let us understand on which parameter the efficiency or number of theoretical plates, the retention time and the resolution is uh, dependent. It actually depends on to the surface area. And uh, on which parameter the surface area is dependent? So please understand, I am actually talking about the surface area of the stationary phase. We are talking about the selection of appropriate pore size and the ligand. And these two parameters are related to the column. So the first point is what? The efficiency, retention time and the resolution is proportional to the surface area. Means the more is the surface area available, of the stationary phase, the more will be the efficiency, retention time and resolution. Surface area is inversely proportional to the pore size. See, we are talking about the bonded stationary phase. And let us understand that the stationary phase is coated over to the silica particle. So these silica particles are the porous silica particles. And when we talk about the porous silica particles, the pore size is very important parameter. So how the surface area is related to the pore size now? The smaller is the pore size, you can easily understand that the bigger is going to be the available surface area. Or uh, bigger is the pore size, then the smaller is going to be the available surface area. See. It is not only about understanding the surface area, but it is about understanding the effective surface area. So how one can understand the effective surface area? What is mean by effective surface area? So please allow me to explain with the help of this diagram. So you can see that uh, there is a stationary phase available, uh, which is denoted by yellow color. And you can see the uh, bonded stationary phase uh, which is uh, denoted by the uh, the black color line so these are the chain structure right because c8 and c18 looks like a chain structure and you can see that there are pores available onto this silica particles this is a one pore and this is another pore and this pore comes with the defined size of let us say 80 angstrom or 120 angstrom so, if you look in the diagram, you will find the red color triangles. Now, what these triangles are? They are the analytes and I denoted them as the small molecules. So, in case if the molecular size is much, much lower than the, uh, the pore size, these molecules can have the freely interaction with the stationary phase available inside the pore. And unless and until there is an interaction of molecule or our analyte with the stationary phase, the retention is not going to be possible. So this interaction is very important. And you can see this mobile phase is in the denoted into the blue color. So this is one example. In this case, we can expect that the good efficiency. Why? Because the interaction is very much possible. And as there is a good amount of interaction between analyte and stationary phase, the retention time is also going to be a good one. Let us now understand the second example on the right side of your screen. Now again, the stationary phase is the same. Again, the pore size is the same. Again, the mobile phase is the same. But I have only changed the size of the analyte. The earlier analyte size was 300. And let us now assume that the, the as molecular weight of uh, the uh, new analyte is 30,000. I am talking about this example. So this is the big molecules like proteins and peptides. 
and just imagine that this molecule is not able to enter inside the pore. So if it is not able to enter inside the pore, will it be able to interact with the stationary phase available inside the pore now? It will be not and hence the interaction will be limited and because of that we can expect poor efficiency and poor retention time. So with these two diagrams you can easily understand that what is the importance of pore size as far as retention and efficiency is concerned. So I can say that this is the right combination of pore size and the molecular weight but if you look at the right figure or diagram you can easily understand that you know the pore size is not suitable for the given molecular weight. So it is important to choose the appropriate pore size to achieve optimal separation of small molecules. Especially you can think about having a pore size of in between 80 to 120 angstrom for the small molecules. And in case if you are dealing with the uh, bigger molecules, the macromolecules like proteins and peptides, you can think of having a pore size in the range of 200 to even 1000 angstrom. But also remember, an overly small or overly large pore size gives peak broadening and poor resolution. Let us further understand the exact relationship. So for low molecular weight compounds, if you have the overly big pore size of let us say 1000 angstrom, you can expect the lot of peak broadening. Similarly, in case if you have the larger molecules like proteins and peptides, the macromolecules, but if you select over the small pore size like 80 or 120 angstrom, you can expect the again the similar phenomenon of the peak broadening. So there must be a balance between the molecular weight and the pore size to achieve the effective peak set, efficiency and resolution or the separation. Second important point, we talked about the effective pore size or the surface area. Let us now understand what is the role of uh, stationary phase or the ligand chain length like C18, C8 or C4. See the chain length of the ligand also plays a very important role in achieving the effective separation or a resolution. Let us understand further the relationship. For low molecular weight compound, if you have the small pore size, and the long chain stationary phase like C18, you can expect the better separation. But in case if you have the larger molecule, you, you have and if you have the big pore size and small chain like C4, then you can expect the better separation. Let us now further understand all this phenomenon with the help of very simple diagram. So you can see in a diagram there is a molecular weight ranging until 1 lakh uh, Daltons. You can see a column with a pore size of 120 to 300 angstrom and then, are, then there are three stationary phases or ligands I have considered for this discussion C18, C8 and C4. So what is the best combination of the pore size and the ligand is going to be a part of discussion as per this slide. So if you have the molecule with the molecular weight around or less than 5000 if a molecular weight of the compound is less than 5000 the effective pore size can be a 120 angstrom and the star denotes what the excellent so when you select the higher chain length like c18 you can expect the better efficiency better retention time and better separation when you go with the little reduced chain length like C8, then you can expect good efficiency, good retention time and good separation. But when you go for the lower chain length like C4, it's going to be a moderate efficiency, moderate retention time and moderate separation. So let us now understand in case if you have the molecular, uh, if you have a compound with the molecular weight with the big uh, molecular size like 20,000 Daltons, what should be your preferred uh, pore size and the ligand. 
so in case if you have a molecular uh, compound with let us say a uh, molecular weight around 20000 daltons so you can select the column with the pore size of around 200 angstrom uh, and in case if you select a C18 as a ligand you can expect the good uh, efficiency good retention time and the good separation however in case if you select the C8 uh, stationary phase you can expect excellent uh, efficiency excellent retention time and excellent separation however with the little smaller carbon chain like c4 still you can expect the good efficiency good retention time and the good separation let us now understand if you have the really a very very big molecules like in terms of one lakh daltons molecular weight in case you have to select the 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 pore size with the bigger size like 300 angstrom in that case if you select the higher carbon length uh, columns like C18 you are going to expect the moderate efficiency moderate retention time and even moderate separation or the resolution <clears throat> in case if you select a C8 column you can expect the good efficiency good retention time and good separation however in this case if you select the uh, you know smaller carbon chain column like C4 you can expect excellent uh, efficiency excellent retention time and excellent separation so i hope uh, this particular table will help you in understanding what is the best combination of the pore size and the ligand with respect to the given molecular weight compound